Hello and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a library of video resources and tips for using the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein. I'm the PLSQL evangelist for Quest Software and the author of 10 books on the Oracle PLSQL language. To find out more about me and my books and whatever else, visit stephenfeuerstein.com. So the topic for today's video is where did that error come from? In terms of taking advantage of this tip, the prerequisites are that you should have a working knowledge of the PLSQL language. To take advantage of this particular feature I'm going to show you, you will need to have Oracle 10G Release 2 or higher installed and available to you. And in terms of accessing all the demonstration code that I show you, you can do that by visiting toadworld.com slash sf, my initials. And that's PLSQL Obsession, which is a website full of, of information and resources for PLSQL developers. And right on the front page, you'll find the companion files for the training, the demo zip file. Unzip that, and you'll have access to every single file that I name and talk about in my tip. Okay, so the tip. So an error occurs in my program, an exception is raised, and the question is, what should I do at that point? First of all, we need to gather as much information as possible so that we can diagnose and fix the source of the problem. What was going on at the time, what were the values of my variables, and one of the most important pieces of data that I think anybody will want is the line number on which the error was raised so that I can trace back, I can go back to that part of my program and say, aha, line 15 raised no data found, why did that happen, and so on. If I don't have that line number, it's a lot harder to track down the problem. Well, turns out that prior to Oracle 10G Release 2, the only way to get this information, to get the line number on which the error was raised, was to let the exception go unhandled, and then have in view the error stack and, and trace that was displayed to you by the host environment like SQL Plus. That's not a very nice solution. So I'm going to tell you about a much better solution in, in PLSQL, but let's first take a look at what actually does go on without the use of this great new feature. We'll hop over to Toad. This is a file called backtrace.sql. Backtrace.sql is inside your demo zip, fi demo zip, uh, zip file. And I'm going to create a series of three programs, PROC1, 2, and 3. PROC3 calls PROC2. PROC2 <coughs> calls PROC1. And PROC1 raises no data found. And what we want to know is, where did the error occur? I've got this big stack of programs. Your, your call stack will be 20, 30 programs deep. It can be very difficult to track down the cause of the problem without this information. What I'm going to do is grab those three create programs, create statements, and then I'm going to run PROC3. I'll run PROC3. Notice there's no exception handling, so the exception will go unhandled. And when I run this code, creating the three programs and running my program, Toad shows me this great information, it tells me the error was negative 1403, no data found, and it shows me the trace back through PROC3, PROC2, PROC1. It shows me that the line, the error occurred on line 5 of PROC1. And if I go to, to PROC1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's my line number. Excellent stuff. That's, of course, what we want to see. And, of course, you'd also like to say that, well, I don't want my exception to go unhandled. I want to trap my exception and then display or get that line number. That's where the trouble begins prior to Tenji Release 2. If I trap the exception and say display the error message, which some of you probably do by calling SQL error message, in another tip that I'll be publishing, uh, I'll explain why you should not use SQL error message and instead use this, the DBMS utility format error stack program. But in most cases, they do the same thing. They'll display the error message, and that'll certainly be true here. So I'm going to run my program, PROC3. I'm going to trap the exception and show the error, the error stack. I run my code. Look at the results. Whoops, sorry. Let's bring that back. Look at the results right here. And what I see, come on. And what I see is no data found, just the error message. So the bottom line is that prior to 10G Release 2, if I trap the exception internally in PLSQL in the back end, I lose that information, that line number. You can only see it if the exception goes unhandled. And that's, frankly, ridiculous. <clears throat> so in Oracle 10G Release 2, Oracle fixed this problem. Oracle added another function to the DBMS utility package. And my apologies for the typo here. It should be DBMS, not DMBS. But we'll keep on going. So the format error backtrace function will provide us with this information. It basically traces back to the line number on which the error was raised. And you can call it from anywhere in your code, but almost always you're going to call it within an exception section as part of your error logging process. Let's take a look. 
back to Toad. Go back to my original script. And what I'm going to do is change PROC3. So it's going to call PROC2, which calls PROC1. I'm going to trap the exception in my backend, which of course is what you're most likely going to want to do. And then I'm going to log the error. In this case, I'll simply display the information. And I'm going to show the error stack at the top level. And it's going to use the format error stack function of dbmesh utility to display the error message. And it'll show format error backtrace. That's the new function. So let's create PROC3 or recreate it. That compiled. And now let's run PROC3 without any kind of exception handling. Notice no exception on this block. And when I run my script, I now see the following. The error message no data found. That came from the error stack call. And here's the backtrace. Just like you saw before when the exception went unhandled, it traces back through PROC3, PROC2, PROC1 line 5. So this backtrace function gives you exactly what you need. A way to get the line number on which the error was raised. Fantastic stuff! Some things to remember about backtrace. If you ever re-raise your exception, which you can do inside any exception handler, you can ra write raise semicolon and re-raise the existing exception or raise another exception. As soon as you do that, any calls to backtrace that happens after that will trace back to that line. That's the most recently raised exception. So in general, before you call raise semicolon or raise a different exception from within your exception section, first call the backtrace function and store that line number that you have at that point so it's not lost when you re-raise the exception. The other thing to keep in mind is that the backtrace function does not include the error message. It just has that trace back. So in general, you want to combine a call to DBMS utility format error stack with the format error backtrace function to get that full picture error message plus the trace back to the line number. Now in general, you don't want to be writing a lot of this code over and over again. Instead, what you'd like to do is have a reusable error manager that does it all for you. If you don't already have one of those, I strongly encourage you to check out the Quest Error Manager which is a freeware utility available at PL SQL Obsession as well. And it has all the pre-built elements that you can use to simply call register error or raise error, and it will automatically log all this information, including the backtrace and the error stack and any other information you provide to it. So if you don't already have a generic error manager, head over to the PL SQL Obsession website, click on Quest Error Manager, and download and check out this utility. Okay, so to sum up, uh, whoops, sorry. So to sum up, use backtrace to trace back to that line number. Call it whenever you're logging an error so that you have a good handle on what went wrong, where it happened, and, and diagnose your problems much more quickly. And in terms of taking advantage of some extra resources and fun on PLSQL, I encourage you to visit the plsqlchallenge.com website to take the PLSQL Challenge. It's a daily quiz that will actually be starting April 1st, but you can register now. It's a daily quiz that will culminate in a quarterly championship tournament, and you as a PLSQL developer can win cash and other prizes like books just for your knowledge of PLSQL. So do visit plsqlchallenge.com, register, start playing on April 1st, and of course, come visit me at stephenforestine.com, read my blogs, sign up for my monthly PLSQL newsletter, all at that website. I hope that was a useful tip for you, and I look forward to offering more in the future. Take care, everybody, and happy PLSQL coding.